welcome to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham. Now, this year's contender applications have come from as far afield as Cyprus, Germany and the Falklands. Now, they don't all want to come here just for the privilege of battling it out against our gladiators. They also want to get their hands on our prizes. And what fabulous prizes they are. This series champions will each drive off with one of these fabulous top-of-the-range sports cabriolets. And £1,000. Our runners-up, they will receive a dream holiday on the paradise island of the Camors. And also this year, once again, we're giving away £1,000 to the holder of the fastest eliminator time. So there's lots of exciting things going on, but let's get on with the show tonight and let's meet tonight's contenders. They are Juliet Machen. And Kerry Shacklock. What are you doing where you're from? I'm a marketing communication specialist now from Chester and I'm currently working in Germany. Oh, you like Germany? It's okay, but it's with the Germans, so. <laughs> oh, say no more, say no more. Um, now listen, I understand um, you've got a bit of support in here with you tonight. Yeah, I've got a good crew over there. <laughs> row, row and oarsman and awesome and all this sort of stuff. You're a rower then, I guess. Yeah, I do try. <laughs> Tell us, do you have any achievements or you just sort of enjoy doing it in your spare time? No, I went to the World Championships in 1995 and won a silver medal there. And... <laughs> Tell me, is rowing good for your bottom? No, it's not very good for your bottom. It's good for your back, but not good for your backside. Oh, I won't try that one then. No. Um, <laughs> you told me that Gladiators is good for your bottom. Yeah, I've had really stiff for them all week. <laughs> well, say no more. Let's hear it for Juliet Machen. <laughs> Kerry, you were on standby last year for Gladiators. Now you've actually made it. How do you feel about that? It's great to be here. I am so chuffed that I've got through out of all those people who applied. It's just brilliant. OK, well, then tell us a little bit about where you come from and what you do. Um, I come from Poynton in Cheshire. And uh, <laughs> I own virtual boarding kennels with my mum. And um, it's just great. I love the outdoors. So walking those dogs must keep you fit. Yes, you do. <laughs> Taken for lots of walks, so, you know, that's how I relax as well. And it's just great fun. What are the sports you do to keep fit? Uh, tennis is my main sport, um, and I like going to the gym as well. So, out of all the gladiators here, the, the female gladiators, which one would you most fear? Uh, probably Lightning, because she's just so quick, everything. Well, let's hope you're quick tonight. Let's hear it for Kerry! Now let's meet the guys. Tonight they are Ronnie Williams and Nigel Bannister. You're going to do yourself an injury doing things like that. Ronnie, tell us what you're doing, where you're from. Um, I work for British Telecom as a senior technician and uh, yeah, I come from Coventry. I'm here for the West Midlands. I gather. And, um, you must have a few familiar faces sitting there, You're like your family. Tell us um, about them. Yeah, I've got Fiona, my girlfriend, Acacia is four, my son Nico, who is nine, and Kai is just three months old. And I love them all. Aww. And all my friends. And all your friends and everyone who knows me. Yeah. Um, now listen, this isn't the first time you've applied to Gladiators, is it? No, this is my fourth time, and I'm finally there now. That must be quite awesome to apply and then what, get rejected, and then finally to make it here. How does that feel? Feels great. Birmingham is great! <laughs> and I hope you're fit and ready to go because we're looking forward to seeing you in action. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Williams. Nigel, what was all that bumping and bopping at the top of the steps there? I don't know, just something, it's just a little something we put together. Mind you, you should be used to a bit of bumping because you play a bit of rugby league, don't you? Yes, uh, rugby league six is four. And uh, can't beat a bit of rugby league. So tell us a little bit about where you come from and what you do. Uh, I'm from Hull, and I'm an engineering technician for Jarvis Facilities. And uh, have you got a family? Yes, I've got a lovely wife, Julie, and two lovely daughters, Care Steel's nearly three, and Katie Hill's one. I know, uh, having read your bio, Julie uh, moans a little bit about you playing a lot of sport. What does she think about you coming on Gladiators? She thinks it's absolutely brilliant. She thinks it's great. Uh, what do you do to relax? Uh, spend time with my wife and kids. 
and mind you, if you can call that relaxing. <laughs> so I know how you feel. I'm not sure you're going to relax tonight with our gladiators, but let's hear it for Nigel. So now that we've met our contenders, let the games begin. Siren swings out to get tonight's action underway. And Siren's first season of Glads looking very relaxed on the rings. She's facing Juliet Machini, marketing manager working in computers, who's looking not to get herself downloaded on these rings. Now they can't stop herself crashing. Bumps straight into Siren. Siren tries to hook a foot, but Juliet manages to hit the escape button. And Siren building it up for another voluminous blast. Juliet's got herself one ring. She's at the mercy of Siren. Siren again, but swings away. Can't get a purchase. Juliet's mum, Jean, getting agitated already. Don't speak too early. And for Juliet, the danger looks to have passed. Their boyfriend, David, with the encouragement. Jean regained her composure. And Siren swinging back to find a better line of attack. Juliet hovering on the edge of the scoring zone. And Siren swooping in again. Grabs an ear, shoulder, still can't get a decent grip. Now Siren one ringed. Oh, dives for it! Oh, she's out of there. The time is going down, but not as fast as Siren. Can Juliet hit the scoring zone to claim five? Oh, no, she's blown it. A free swing on the rings, but she lets the point slip through those fingers. It is nearly Juliet Bravo. Well, Juliet, you looked a little bit tentative to start with, and then you swung straight into her. <laughs> I know, I didn't see where she was coming from. And when she fell off, I just missed that ring. You were so close to being in the scoring zone. I know, it's so annoying, but it's a good game. Missed opportunity and, um, oh, young lady. Well, I was hanging about for a while, desperately trying to grab her, but eventually I just went for it and she hung in there. She certainly did. Let's hear it for Siren and Juliet. Never mind. <laughs> Next up, it's Kerry. And she's going to be swinging it out against Lightning. The Lightning Seed disaster for anyone who crosses her path. The bombshell rarely puts a foot wrong. Stands a superb 170 tall, weighs a fabulous 57 kilos. Kerry measures up very nicely too, giving away three centimeters in the height department, but she's three kilos to the good weight-wise. Three, two, one! Lightning with a 100% record to maintain. Trains constantly won't allow herself to get ring rusty in this event. Kerry Shacklock will be looking to avoid the Lightning leg lock any which way she can. Kerry trying to go wide, but Lightning's having none of it. Kerry in the grip of impending doom. And Lightning locks her up and brings her down. Yes, textbook takedown from the hang tough high flyer. Mum and Dad, Dorian and Bill know it was a foregone conclusion. Lightning making sure that she's OK. Telling Kerry that there's still plenty of time to clock up some points. Let's get down there for an in-depth analysis. Are you all right, Kerry? You had a nasty fall. Something clicked, but I'm OK. Oh, my God. <laughs> she meant business, I'm afraid. She did. She was very quick. <laughs> I mean, a, cu a couple of swings and then she had it. Yeah, that's right. That's what she's like. It must be a daunting task for any contender. I mean, it's daunting enough having to interview at the end, but uh, to be facing you on this. Well, I heard that Kerry was very good in practice, so uh, I tried to get to her as quick as possible, hence the double rings. But. Uh, I think you did very well. I didn't think you were going to come down, actually, and I hope you know you're OK. Yeah, brilliant. She seems to be OK. Well done, Lightning, and well done, Kerry. No point. Well done, but no points indeed. A mixed start to the proceedings for the Glads, but after one event, no scores on the board. Juliet Neal, Kerry Neal. So we now move into the men's event with Ronnie. And he's going to be facing Ace. The high-speed ace packs plenty of power into that fabulous physique, stands a towering 185, tips the scales at 104 kilos and measures 132 round the chesty bits. Ronnie's giving away 8 centimetres in height and 30 kilos in the weight department. Ace 
sets the pace. He's never a disgrace. You can bet on the ace to deal up a handful of trouble for Ronnie on those rings and maintain the Gladiator's clean sheet so far. Meets Ronnie more than halfway. He'll traverse to collect him on the incoming swing. Takes Ronnie in his stride, locks up. Nico gritting his teeth, but that's no help. The ace drops him. Yes! Nico somewhat disappointed, but when the ace has got a grip on, the only way is down. Let's get some technical insight on that action. Well, Ronnie, I mean, he's pretty good at this. Yeah, he was really good. He got me. Fantastic. Well done. I, I saw you trying to wriggle out of his grasp there, and I thought at one stage you might be able to. I nearly got it, but he just put his body weight on me, and that was it. You look seriously confident, I have to say, from the minute you left the platform. I thoroughly enjoy it up there. I'm going to try and make that my game this year. Um, the hardest bit about it is knowing which way it's going to go at the beginning and which arm to start with. But um, I double ring to begin with, and he made it quite easy for me, but he's good. Great start for you. Let's hear it for Ace and for Ronnie. Great sportsmanship from both guys. Last up on Hang Tough, it's Nigel. He's going to be swinging it out. Looks like Nigel's up for this. Well, since I heard I was on Gladiators, everything's just gone crazy. I eat, sleep, drink it. Everything just revolves around Gladiators. The lads at work, they're absolutely wrapped in it. I thought they'd get bored of hearing me talk about it, but they just can't get enough of it. The neighbours the other week threw a surprise party for me, wishing me all the best and well done. Everybody's just gone Gladiator by me, and I love it. Nigel may love it, but it's Khan's job to make life as tough as possible up there. And if anybody can, Khan can. Swinging into position and trying to keep Nigel out of the points. Nigel Bannister, an engineering technician on the railways, taking the fast track down the right to evade Khan. Grabs a red. Wife Julie holding something in her hand. Whatever it is, it's not as good as the rings her husband's got a hold of. Nigel looking to slip by. Khan's turned on him. Grabs a piece of lycra. Julie again taking a drink. It's a hooter. Julie blowing a hooter at Khan as he tries to tie up Nigel. Nigel won't oblige. Pulling the shorts. Can he get the legs on? Oh, slipping and slithering. Gets a grip and slides down the banister. Denies Nigel with less than 20 seconds to go. Great action from the guys. Pretty good stuff from the girls, too. Time was pressing and Khan was going to grab the first thing that came to hand. Thankfully, Nigel's shorts managed to stay up, but they were the only things that did. Nigel, I thought he was rather cheeky trying to get hold of your shorts. You want to see what I've got on underneath? Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure if we do, but I mean, once he got hold of you like that, you must have just thought there's no way you're going to hang on with his weight as well as your own. Well, let's put it this way, I wasn't going to go down without a fight. Let's hear the card, and never mind Nigel, no point. That's how it stands, nil-nil after one event. Let's join the Glads in paradise. delicious and healthy and I'm keeping really fit. Looking forward to seeing you in two weeks when I return. Yeah, we are really fit. John Anderson has us running two half marathons, then we do 300 press-ups and then we spend four hours on the travelator. All this before breakfast. P.S. I'm coming home tomorrow. Standing at the foot of the wall, it's Julia. And she's going to be chased by Falcon. Also yeah. getting ready to climb. It's Kerry. Yeah. And she's going to be pursued by Fox. Fox is on the prowl. We'll go to John Anderson. Contenders, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. <laughs> Juliet in pink, based in Germany, but now there's no Berlin Wall to practice on. Carrie in yellow owns a boarding kennel. How well can she handle a fox? 
Juliet climbing well, and here come the Glads. Falcon will be playing on Juliet, who's looking forward to playing her balcony scene at the top of the wall for 10 points. Fox not eating into Kerry's lead. In fact, both contenders climbing well. Kerry's brother, Stuart, in purple, giving it plenty. And look at Falcon. Up the wall, takes it to the air. It's finished for Juliet and her folks, but how about this? Kerry with a gold medal climb for 10. Kerry's family with plenty to go merry about. Fantastic climb. That was brilliant. That was really good. I really enjoyed that. Is this one you were looking forward to? Uh, yes, I was looking forward to it. Oh, wow. Did you, did you ever see Fox at any time? Uh, no, I didn't look behind. I wasn't going to stop and check. That's always a good sign. Yeah. Well, Kerry, Kerry's done ever so well. She scored 10 points. And a big cheer from Grandma Mary and Grandpa Dan. And here's why. Juliet's on zero, but Kerry has 10 after two events. Ready now for our next event. Our first male contender standing on sumo platform is Ronnie. And he's up against Rhino. Rhino's got some sizable stats on display for sumo ball. Stands a meter 72 tall, weighs 112 kilos, which makes him five centimeters shorter, but 38 kilos heavier than Ronnie. Ronnie's got 30 seconds to stay on the platform for five points or shift the Rhino off his feet to score 10. Rhino pushing home that weight advantage. Ronnie on the brink of disaster. Manages somehow to stay on. Rhino with another charge. Ronnie bending over backwards to stay in this event. Less than 15 to go. Mum Carmel in good voice on the left. Rhino powering around the platform. Ronnie like a rag doll. Oh, what a tragedy with six seconds on the clock. Rhino sends him on a dramatic spin round the edge. The son of Kai can hardly bear to look. Speak to me, Ronnie. Yeah, I'm okay. I've done good on dear life, but he caught me in the end. That was good. What was your, your kind of plan, though? Are you going to attack or just try I and hang I tried to on? attack and then twist it, then go for it, but he had me, and that was good. Thank you. Rhino, good challenge from Ronnie. He's done very well. That's the hardest sumo ball I've had. Well done. Let's hear it for Rhino and Ronnie! There's some sporting stuff out there tonight. Good guys. Our second male contender is Nigel! And he's going to be facing Khan! The Khan still cooking from his hang tough win over Ronnie. A hefty hero in the weights and measures department. He's a metre 93 tall and 114 kilos. Nigel, on the other hand, is 23 centimetres shorter and 35 kilos lighter. He Nigel plays rugby league, but can he get a grip on this kind of ball? No, he can't swings him off the platform in seven seconds. Oh, riding the rim, I bet that chafed. Two events and two mat finishes, and Julie not blowing her hooter for that one. Nigel, I have to laugh a little bit with you. What do you make of your brief encounter with Khan? Felt like a flying saucer then, turning round and round. It was always going to be tough. Yeah, always going to be tough. Big fella, isn't he? Yeah, but you're playing a little bit of rugby. I thought you might be used to a bit of pushing and shoving. Yeah, but it's a bit different, isn't it? He's a bit bigger. Khan, great event for you. It's taken me six years to become a gladiator, and it's going to take a tough man to stop me that I've come this far now. Tough words from a tough gladiator. Let's hear it for Khan and Nigel! Two events gone and nothing to show for either of them. Ronnie remains on zero, so does Nigel. Join us after the break for more exciting events here on Gladiators! Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham, where we're ready to start our next event. Swingshot. Our first female contender on Swingshot is Juliet. Also, Kerry. And they'll be facing Rebel and Bo. Over to John Anderson. Contender. together now swing out sisters the leap into oblivion and reaping the rewards Kerry first to the pole takes a yellow for one point Juliet snatches one for herself basket them up for a fast turnaround 1-1 after the first jump 
Oh, Juliet comes up short. Kerry pulls apart. Snaffles another single. The glad slow off the mark. They've got to jump to it. Kerry with a face full of yellow drops it in. Rebel takes to the air. Not at full stretch, and Juliet short again. Kerry back for more. The boat looks to have vanished. Late for the ball as Kerry has a bungee bonanza. Rebel again. Two steps on the deck. Then up. Well short again, but so is Juliet. Kerry. Another free swing, just short of the blue. Less than 20 seconds left in this swing shot session. Rebel takes a flyer. There to parry Juliet off the pole. Kerry first to the post. Takes the blue. Juggles it more by luck than judgment. In trouble with a recoil. And Juliet one final swing to improve her pole position again. Oh, well short of the mark, and that's how it's going to stay. Kerry with the climb to the top, and she'll be out of time for the blue to count. Dad Bill thinks she beat the hooter, but will be disappointed. The scores for the girls' competition. Juliet scores one point. And Kerry scores three points. After three events, Juliet's off the mark. Kerry extends a lead, 13 points to one. And look who's been let out of his cage. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> Isn't it great to be loved by so many people? Their vocabulary is a bit limited, isn't it? Boo! I think they'd think of something else by now, wouldn't you? Under the circumstances, Boo seems rather polite. Now it's the turn of the boys. Standing by to play swing shot, it's Ronnie! And Nigel! And they'll be facing Wolf and Saracen! You know... Over to John Anderson. Contenders ready! Ready goes ready! Wolf 45 just a few weeks ago. Three, just to two, remind you and him. One. This will be a good one. Nigel launches his campaign against Saracen. Ronnie's there, high and mighty, and Wolf tackles him up. A handful of points and a leg loader. Wolf. John Anderson will shed some light on it if someone sheds some light on him. Ronnie holding three oh, points. On, ref, that was an accident. Try getting those points off him. Well, let's see it again. Wolf late as Ronnie takes off. Wolf behind him and locks up his legs. Foul play from the Wolf. No more than you'd expect. Wolf. Whoa. Once again, I have to remind you not just of the rules of the game, but of the spirit of the game. I know you're not good on colours, but this is a yellow card. One more repeat, and you're on... Oh! There are... There are 53 seconds remaining. Three, two, one! Ronnie's score stands, and here they come again. Four-way clash, a blur of arms and legs, and Ronnie comes away with another yellow. 4-0 to him. Ronnie again, head and shoulders above Wolf, but gets a face full of Wolf's shoe, very nasty, if only for the spell. Nigel up, but not really at it, Wolf again into the action, this time Ronnie's lost his spring, still dazed from the stench of Wolf's shoe. Ronnie struggling back to the platform, 6-0 lead, Wolf ready to go, Nigel needs to get something going here. Saracen swings out, Nigel with nothing, Ronnie up for another bite. Wolf's there. Oh yeah, Wolf being told to keep his hands off the pole and not for the first time. Nigel gearing up for one final swing. Can he break the duck? Oh no! The spring didn't match the swing. Nigel's basket is empty and that's about how it's going to stay. Looks like 6-0 to Ronnie. Let's wait for the confirmation. Ronnie's folks seem quite pleased with that. The result of the men's events is... Nigel, no points. Ronnie, six points. Yeah, easy, easy, easy. Better than the Wolf. Let's hear it for our gladiators, Wolf Van Saracen. Saracen, impeccable as ever. Wolf, impossible as ever. The crowd wouldn't want it any other way. After three events, Ronnie's on six points. Nigel, still the score. Meanwhile, back in Mauritius. Enjoying this deep-sea fishing trip, warrior? Oh, yes, Ollie. It's all coming back to me now. This reminds me of what I used to do before the gladiators. The foaming water, the spray, the clippers, the waves. Oh, yes. I 
didn't know you were once an old sea dog. I wasn't. I used to be a hairdresser. That explains a lot. I feel lacquered. On now to our next event. Standing at the foot of the pyramid, it's Juliet and Kerry. Standing at the top of the pyramid, it's Rio and Fox. Juliet's aware of the enormous task ahead of her. I knew it wasn't going to be easy when I came on the show. From having watched the shows in the past, I can see that the contenders are fit and that the games are hard. They're all really complex and you have to have a lot of different strengths in different areas. And although I'm here to win, um, I know it's not going to be easy. You can say that again. This is the toughest of them all. And Juliet steps up against Rio. Kerry hoping to outwit the Fox. Juliet looking to go right. Oh, Rio makes sure it's right to the ground. Fox hunting down Kerry and rolls her back to where she came from. If the contenders get to the red step, the Glads can't tackle them and they can get a free run to the top. First there claims 10 points. Rio takes Juliet in a stride, holds her up, leaves her down. Kerry looking to go wide, but the Fox is there to brush her away. Almost halfway through, and no sign of the summit being cracked. These glads displaying some serious pyramid power. You think Rio's good on the push? You should see her on the pull. Fox and Kerry wrestling it out. If there's anything that gets you down this pyramid, it's the gladiators. Juliet, a forlorn figure. Get up! John Anderson rebuking Fox for holding. Rio and Juliet in a standoff. Juliet with a turn of speed, but the Rio's fast and flowing. Oh, and throwing. Fox allowing Kerry to crawl up a couple of steps before slapping her down again. The contenders like the Pharaohs, buried in the bottom of the pyramid. Plenty of effort, but little reward. And don't they all know it? You may not have picked up any points this time, but uh, you did very well. She was throwing you around like a rag doll. She's a big girl. <laughs> she picks me out like I'm a bag of sugar. <laughs> Down there, sort of flick them and all, flicking them off. Well, there is actually a method to my madness. She's a, a little bit smaller than me, in case you hadn't noticed, and I didn't want to land on her and squash her, so <laughs> I thought the best move was just to give her a bit of a push. Ah, oh, how very sweet are you. Let's hear it for Rio and Juliet. Kerry, uh, a lot of hard work for, for no points. Well, yes, it was very tough that she was very quick. All credit to the gladiator. <laughs> Fox, you were just uh, playing it rather cool, weren't you? Uh, my body stopped spinning, but I think my head's still going. But she's quick, but not quick enough about the one the Fox. <laughs> OK, yeah. let's hear it for Kerry and Fox! Hello, the Grim Reaper's in. After four events, the scores stay the same. Juliet on one, Kerry on 13. So now we move into the men's event. And standing at the foot of the pyramid, it's Ronnie and Nigel! Facing Wolf and Hunter. Contenders ready! Lady Dogs ready! Three, two, one! Ronnie facing the return of the Wolf for Nigel against Hunter. Ronnie breaking right. Wolf impeded by Nigel. Can't get back. Ronnie straight to the top. Wow, thank you very much. Ten points, slaps it home. We figured there'd be fireworks against the wall, but not like this. Kyle being bounced around by his mum, Fiona. Number one indeed, and Nigel needs to get among the points now. Hunter disposes of him. Wolf ordered away by John Anderson. Nigel likes Skippy the kangaroo against the Hunter. Bouncing around, going right, but Hunter's there to bushwhack him and send him back down under. Ronnie right behind Nigel, and fortunately for Nigel, Hunter's right in front of him. Carl Nigel's coach there giving it some. Nigel bouncing right, but Hunter's there to make sure it's all wrong. Nigel weighs 79 kilos, but Hunter just dusts him away. Julie needs to give him another blast on that hooter, but Nigel's not going to crack the code, which gets him past Hunter and up to the top of the pyramid. The Hunter is quite invincible. They shall not pass. And that's either John Anderson's hooter or Julie's. Hunter the first to commiserate with Nigel. Pete's Ronnie's dad leads the applause, and Nigel fans putting on a brave face. Well, um, I'm not sure if you understand the rules of the game here. Now, the contenders are trying to make their way to the top, and you're going to try and stop them. Which game were you playing?
What can I say? It was a misunderstanding. I hit Hunter's man straight away. Oh. Do you not communicate? <laughs> we, just... Oh. we just clashed. It's as simple as that. I didn't even get a chance to get to my guy. I know. It's such a shame, but it was terrific news for Ronnie, of course. He picked up ten points. Let's hear it for Ronnie and let's hear it for Wolf. Nice. Full credit to you. You never gave up. You never give up. There's always a chance. But say, Hunter was just a bit better than me today. So, there you go. When you were locked in those embraces, were any words exchanged? No, he just kept growling at me. But that didn't bother me. He can growl at me all day. Ronnie, it was as if, uh, you know, we blinked and you were up. Yeah, well, Nige caused the obstruction for me and I just went for it. And there's no way Big Bad Wolf was going to catch me! Uh, you stop Nigel very easily. Yeah, he's, he's a very powerful stocky contender. And my legs are a little bit longer, so uh, I can get the pyramid a bit better. But there's some other games in the show which will be better for him, so uh, good luck for them. OK, let's hear it for Nigel, Ronnie and Hunter! Wise words as ever from Hunter, the consummate athlete. <laughs> After four events, Ronnie leaps up to 16, Nigel stays on naught. OK, lads, final check for this deep-sea fishing trip. Got rods? Got, got rods. rods. Got reels? Got reels. reels. Got bait? Yeah, I got bail. Oh, bait, sorry, yeah. yeah. Got, yeah bait. got bait. Got bait. Got lines? Oh, stop, stop, stop. Sorry, I'm not ready. Why not? Still learning my lines. Oh, just because he's acting now, he thinks he's Jimmy Cagney. Jimmy Cagney? More like Jimmy Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> It's Juliet, and she's going to be facing Rocket. Now, let's look at the specifications for this Rocket. It towers a superb 182 tall, weighs 77 kilos. On the other side of the platform, Juliet is 12 centimetres shorter and 17 kilos lighter. She could do with the points and a bit of luck to go with it. Rocket fires up and Juliet's blasted into orbit. Rocket, the one-hit wonder. Now, don't blink, Juliet did, and that was the result. Her name's Juliet because on this occasion, Juliet stick, then Juliet mat. Oh, Juliet, I thought your, your rowing might come in handy, but it was just one blow, wasn't it? I don't think I was ready. I lost my balance on the first go. I was useless. We weren't completely useless. I mean, we have seen worse, I think. But um, you didn't get a chance to even enjoy it. No, I'm not very happy about that. Well, I'll leave you with that, and oh my God, what is this going to do to your ego? Uh, great. Excellent. I just wanted to get her off as quick as possible, and um, I did. You certainly did. One blow. Let's hear it for Rocket and for Juliet. <laughs> Next up on Jewel, it's Kerry. And she's going to be facing Gold. Kerry loves to win. Here's what she told me earlier. I play pool and I was in a competition. I got through to the final. I had to play someone from the Cheshire League. Unfortunately, I lost and I hate to lose. So watch out, Gladiator. Three, two, Gold sets to work in her first individual performance, and Kerry looking to turn in an 18 carat showing herself. Gold smacking them in, but Kerry soaking them up. She'll take some shifting. Kerry jabbing, trying to show that all that glistens isn't gold. The gold standard is very high, but it needs to be to cope with Kerry. Ten points for the KO and five for going the distance. A couple of golden shots from the Gladiator, but Kerry, a durable duelist, and she's striking gold. Looks like Kerry's good for five. Oh, but Gold steps across. Kerry pockets a tenner at Gold's expense. Where's Kerry's boyfriend? Kerry found herself in serious trouble, but Gold's big finish was devalued. Kerry! Come here, girl. You picked up ten points! You must be so delighted. I am, yeah, so sure. That was hard going, that was. I thought I was a goner then. Well, it was getting better and better. It was getting nastier and nastier, dare I say. Uh, I'm just amazed that I've got 10 points. That was real. Well, go away and enjoy it. That's a terrific end. And she was a tough cookie. Well, I tell you, she gave me a hard time up there. But um, it was nerve-wracking because it's my first game. 
but I'll be back. That's, it's a good learning process. Oh, we'll look forward to that. Let's hear it for Gold and for Kerry. Well done. We'll be seeing more of the glittering gladiator as the season progresses, but after five events, look at this. Juliet still on one, but Kerry on 23. Sounds like a scene from Rocky IV, the support for Ronnie. Yeah. He'll need it. It's every man for himself. And Hunter stings in a couple. Oh, rocks Ronnie, and there he rolls. The last thing to go through Ronnie's mind was Hunter's pugil stick. Ronnie's mum and dad, Carmel and Peter, applaud the huntsman. Little Kai and daughter, Acacia, looking well, stunned. Quite understandably disappointed and a bit angry about that one. Yeah. Trying to get him early, but he caught onto it and he got me off. Great, it was great, brilliant. Well done to you. No points for you, Ronnie, though. That's it for Ronnie and Hunter. The family content with that existing 16 point lead. Next up on the duel, it's Nigel. Rattles the snake with the left, but Cobra chops him down, hissing Sid and calls a big one to punish that impudence. But that makes his eyes water. I think he's stuck. The girl's not that impressed. Well, Nigel, you got in there straight away and you did kind of... I think you took him by surprise. Well, it's about all I took him by, wasn't it, I think? <laughs> Certainly, if you'd carried on, you might have knocked him off, but... Uh, whew, he got you there and... Um, he, made hit, you... he hit me with a really hard dig. That shocked me, that did. I thought, oh, that, that's a bit naughty, and, uh, and uh, it hurt a little bit. A little bit, and so you went back for more? Well, I didn't expect him to go that quick, because he's a tough little fella. He certainly is. No points on this occasion, never mind. Let's hear it for Nigel and for Cobra. The front row of Nigel's family, always generous with the applause. That first dig shook me to my boots. <laughs> it woke me up <laughs> anyway. I thought, Hello. I'm on the jaw. Cobra still king of the quip. After five events, Ronnie stays on 16 for old Nigel nil. Waiting just around the corner is the assault course from hell. So join us after the break for more action here on Gladiators. <laughs> indoor arena here in Birmingham where it's eliminator time now let's first have a look at the scores in the women's event Kerry's on 23 points Juliet only scored one point that's a 22 point difference giving Kerry an 11 second head start Jeremy's with the girls Kerry is that almost too much time I don't know you can't tell on this game anything can happen Juliet what are your tactics gonna be I'm just gonna be behind her all the way put some pressure on and hopefully I'll get there first OK, I wish you both the best of luck. Over to the start. Juliet's fans gearing up for some real vocal support. So are Kerry's mum and dad, Doreen and Bill. But it's Juliet with it all to do. Kerry, you will go on my first whistle. Juliet, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Kerry Shacklock from Cheshire, last season's standby contender, sets off to steer a course which in theory should get her a place in the quarterfinals, but as we know on Gladiators, theories are there to be disproved. Bounces up and onto the net, and Juliet Machen joins the race for the highs and lows, 11 seconds adrift. Boyfriend David and mum and dad full of encouragement. Juliet tackles the last high hurdle before the bounce to the net. It's not unknown for an 11-second lead to be undone, and Kerry slow on the downside. Rope next. Juliet chops the net, but Kerry having a bad climb. Juliet pulling back the time as Kerry pulls herself up the rope. Maybe hard work of it all at the moment, but can't be complacent. Juliet with an equally slow rope climb. Kerry on the ladder, swinging in the breeze. Juliet still on the rope. 
seized the initiative but seems to have let it slip. Riding, biking, jogging and fell walking are all Kerry's hobbies and they'll come into play on this eliminator course. Takes to the trapeze, smooth changeover, cargo net next. The climb is on, Doreen and Bill look confident. And Juliet pulled back some time on her last neck climb, she's hoping for the same here, if she ever gets there. Finishes her trapeze now, she's in business. Kerry nearing the top, hands on the gantry. Juliet working steadily. Boyfriend David feeling completely helpless. Kerry across the gantry to the side. Kerry's friend Alison in the glasses loving the spectacle as Kerry's on the downward slope. It's now you realise how big a gap 11 seconds really is. Juliet needs a big pull, but they know she needs a miracle. Kerry on the first seesaw now. Up very quickly. Pushes it over. Juliet on the zip line. You see the enormity of what lies ahead of us. Flashing down now, and Kerry running up for a place in the quarterfinals of Gladiators. Oh, yes, she's there, and she's through. Great win for Kerry. Down with a camera to record that happy event. Brothers Simon and Stuart delighted with that one. Juliet edges the first seesaw down. John Anderson watching for foul play, but it's all academics. Second seesaw before building up for the final burst of energy. Here she comes. It seems like an eternity wading through treacle, but she's going to be there. Pulls her tortured body to the top. Juliet tamed the eliminator. Last rope for the final swing. Great effort. In the end, 11 seconds was really more than enough. Yeah, it sure was. I'm so pleased to get through that. That was so hard. Did you start panicking at any stage? Uh, up the cargo net, I thought I lost it. On both cargo nets, I struggled. But I'm really chuffed. How much have you enjoyed Gladiators this evening? Oh, it's been brilliant. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad you've enjoyed it, because you've got to come back for the quarterfinals. Here's your medal. Well done, you've been a fantastic contender. Let's hear it for Kerry! Well, Juliet, 11 seconds would have required almost a miracle, wouldn't it? Yeah, I thought I was going to catch her until I got the cargo net. I just lost it on the cargo net. Well, listen, Mr. she certainly was. I mean, it's been great to have the two of you on the show. You've had some great support from your friends and family here. Thanks to everybody who's come to see me. Thanks. We've given you a, a grazed knee and a medal, and I don't know what else you require. We're going to give you some flowers, a too. Drink, I think. A stiff drink. Well, I'll join you in that, that's for sure. Let's hear it for Juliet. Alan, Jean and David acclaim their heroine, but here's the winner. Kerry owns a boarding kennel and led Juliet a dog's life in that competition. Juliet consoled by her mum, Jean, but in the fastest eliminator contest, the record held by Audrey Garland stands at 1 minute 41, so Kerry's time of 147.3 doesn't challenge it. Next to endure the extremes of the eliminator of the guys, Ronnie's 16-point lead converts to an 8-second advantage at the start of the misery trail. Deficit. What are you going to be thinking of during those eight seconds? Just focusing, getting through the eliminator, and hoping that Ronnie makes a slip. But I'd like to wish him all the best before we start, and let's hope the best man wins. That's very nice. You must be standing here feeling quietly assured. Well, it's not over until it's over. So um, good luck to my mate, Nigel, as well. Very best of luck to the two of you. See you both at the end. Over to John Anderson. Ronnie's been generous with his praise all night. He's a great fan of this show, so are his kids. Here's what he told me earlier. Every weekend, me and the children, we sit down and watch the gladiators, and they get so excited seeing other contenders against Hunter, Wolf. So just imagine when they see me, their dad, on the show. They'll be so overjoyed, so excited, and I'm going to win it for them. Ronnie, you will go on my first whistle. Nigel, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. The world famous stomach churning, strength sapping eliminator course. This ain't child's play, but Ronnie's out to win for his family. The commentary based telecom engineer bounces to the cargo net, and Nigel with it all to do, but he's certainly got what it takes. Julie's exchanged the hooter for little Katie for good luck. Ronnie up the rope in one, no falters on the climb. Gets it on the second go, handbike next. Nigel comes from Powell, but he's going into hell. Ronnie piking across the ravine. Leo, his brother, urging more efforts. Nigel up the rope, hauls himself to the platform. Ronnie on the trapeze, looking for a changeover. 
now the murderous agony which is the second cargo nets Nigel fighting to put those pedals to work a hint of despair from Paul and still the torture continues Nigel with the trapeze and the net ahead of him Ronnie slowing on the nets and it could be that Nigel's gaining he's an engineering technician and need all his technique and ingenuity to overcome Ronnie's lead as Ronnie hits the top Nigel's face controlling with effort Julie the same as Ronnie begins his final approach to the arena floor aiming for the black mat hits it bang on slow to recover next it's the seesaws but this is no playground it's nerds of steel for this test of balance he's down Nigel's up the end of the net but almost at the end of his tether Ronnie's second seesaw a travelator from victory Carmel knows he's there travelator oh stumbles but still has the power to storm to the top never mind that think of the record Ronnie finishes great contender great win Carmel and Pete plenty to dance about and Fiona too Meanwhile, Nigel on the seesaw, a game guy, achieved the ambition of a lifetime by beating 28,000 other hopefuls to win a place on the show. Second seesaw, the eyes of the nation are upon this 29-year-old former builder's labourer. Eases it down, he's there for the big power-up, giant strides, takes it with ease, a moment packed with emotion. As Nigel swings through the burst to complete the course. Ronnie, those eight seconds and an incredible run i mean that means you've gone through to the quarterfinals thank you very much i'd like to say i missed out my parents earlier on when i mentioned them so this is for my parents my dad pete mum carmel and all the fans from coventry who have been waiting a long time to see me do this and i'll see the next round so watch out oh. we certainly will we look forward to seeing you in the quarters let's hear it for ronnie williams Good luck tonight. Nice, uh, you never gave up. Well, there's one thing, people from Uldo, we never give up. But I say, Ronnie was the best man on the day, and all congratulations to him, and I hope he goes on to win it now. You've been a terrific sportsman. Thanks for coming. Let's hear it for Nigel! <laughs> Thelma, his mum on the left with Dad Derek. What an experience for them. Ronnie still with plenty of energy. There's his dad. Next comes his mum. Come here, son. The pain and pleasure. Nigel with a hug for Julie. Don't bend her hooter. Hello, I think we'd better cut away before he takes anything else off. What did you do today, Daddy? In the competition for the men's fastest eliminator, Ronnie was well outside Anthony Nesbeth's fastest time of 1 minute 17.2, so Anthony's record remains intact. Well, what a terrific evening's competition. Ronnie and Kerry are absolutely great, and I can't wait to see them in the quarterfinals. Absolutely, the action's only just begun, but there'll be more where that's come from next week here on the Gladiators! Gladiators. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. Jeremy and Ulrikaka will be back in just a couple of minutes here on Challenge as Series 6 of Gladiators continues. Well, over on pick, they're heading down under to catch out those naughty smugglers. It's nothing to declare. Right.